Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. I'm just, this is a quick catch up video because I've been working on the Bruce Lee 90mm EDF, this plane that you've seen the unboxing of and it's really a gorgeous looking plane. Now, uh, I've spent a few hours on it so far, just let you know how far I've got because I don't want you thinking I've forgotten about it. And uh, it's just sitting here at the moment. The canopy, I'll, let, I'll show you a few things. Hang on a minute. Okay, the canopy arrived broken. Well, it was cracked in a whole lot of places. So I've had to glue that up a bit. Fortunately, the cracks are in the back so I can actually paint the back half black and you'll never know that it was broken. It's really light blown uh, PET canopy. I could always blow another one if I need to. Not a big deal, but it's taken me a little while to fix that up. Um, I've also wired up the ES or extended the leads on the ESC and I'm using the Hobby King 120 amp ESC. See how that goes because I expect this to draw 100 amps or so, maybe 80 to 100 amps. So I've got a Hobby King ESC. I also have a Turnigy ESC, one of the EA100s or something. So I'll try this one first, see how it goes. Now, obviously the leads are not long enough, so I've had to extend them. And um, I've got to extend these and put a connector on them as well. So we've done a little bit of the wiring, the fan unit, I've got that together. Let's have a look at that. And this is the fan unit. Isn't it lovely? Don't you love the look of that? That's just gorgeous. That's, you know, that's six on a stick that is. Now, I haven't put the little tube in the back that you give you an acetate sheet or a celluloid sheet to roll up, which becomes the, uh, basically the ducting for the back, because as you'll see, if I take the back of this off, if I can get it off, just has a few little screws, and it turns and comes undone, hopefully, but fiddly. As you can see, there are, there's a former in the back there, so that former would disrupt the airflow, and if I take the top of the cover off, you can see, that there's also some formers and things in here. So this former here would disrupt the flow from the fan. So this acetate sheet fits over here, like so, to provide a nice ducting so the, the formers don't upset the airflow. Got the Turnigy motor in there, the 1600 kV Turnigy motor, nice fit, fits very nicely. The fan itself, had a bit of farting around to do to get this all sorted because I had to uh, um, put it on the little hub and then put the screws and Loctite everything in place. So, yep, hopefully this will work very nicely. I haven't actually yet drilled the holes to mount this. One thing I did notice is that the, the molding is it's quite good quality, but you know, it's a bit naff in some areas. I actually had to cut away these formers here because they were supposed to nestle in just behind the mount here, but unfortunately they hit just the top of the mount. So in order to get this to fit and move forward enough, I actually had to cut them away. And you'll also notice that here, if I bring this up, See the fit isn't quite right there, that plywood comes around, but the, the glass doesn't come around far enough. So there's a bit of a gap in there. I should probably just put a bit of tape on that to stop air leakage. But the rest of it is, yeah, it's, it's not too bad actually, it's pretty good. And it does look so pretty. As I say, not bolted in yet, but that looks so pretty. Look at that, oh, gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> so that's the things I've discovered so far. Now inside, I'll give you a little look at what I'm planning to do. The batteries for this model will be the Turnigy Nanotech 3.3, and these are rated at 65 to 130C, I think. What's it say on here? Yeah, 65 to 130C, so they should provide more than enough current. And instead of getting a six cell pack, I've got two three cells. And I did that for a reason, because six cell packs start getting a bit expensive when you get up high in the C ratings. And I mean, let's face it, batteries do fail. And so if you've got a six cell pack and one of the cells fails, well, you've got a no cell pack because it becomes useless. Two three cell packs not only give you more convenience in terms of how to lay them out to get the CG right, but also if a cell goes in one of those packs, well, I've still got the other pack perfectly good. I just have to replace one three cell pack, much cheaper. So it's really a good idea sometimes to forget about the six cell packs, go for two threes. And uh, all I have to do, of course, is make up a little series lead, joiner lead, so that they'll be connected in series and I'll get the full six cell voltage out. So. That's the batteries. I haven't checked for CG. One thing with this model is you don't get any instructions. That's right, no instructions at all. So I'm winging it now. Maybe there's something on the website, but I didn't see anything when I looked. So maybe they've updated it since then. So I'm, you know, so I'm winging it and have to sort of you know, work things out myself. Now, one of the problems may be CG, but I'm gonna show you how to calculate the right position for CG on a model if you don't know what the CG should be. I'll do that in the next part of this, or well, the next video following on from this one. And uh, the other thing, of course, is, you know, I've got to work out where to put things. The whole kit came quite nicely. It's got some nice features. It comes with the oleos, got sprung main gear oleos. You know, they're, they're not super high quality, but they're more than adequate for this machine. The thing that I didn't like that surprised me and shocked me the most was the hardware they're using for the control surfaces. I just have to find it. Hang on a moment. 
here's what I'm talking about. This is the control limit. I wonder if I can zoom up enough on this to get a good shot. Remember, this is a model that, you know, I don't know how fast these things fly, probably well over 160 kilometers an hour when you've got them full powered. And this is the horn for the Elevons. It's ridiculous. It's too small, it's tiny. It'd break off in no time, it's flexible. You would not want to use that because your plane probably wouldn't last long. A slightest hint of flutter and boom, there goes your horn. So I'm not going to use that cheap ass hardware. That those those uh, horns, they're useless. I wouldn't give them a you know, wouldn't give them a chance because they will break and then your model will crash to the ground and burst into flames. So we'll get rid of that. Now, as for radio gear, I'm going to be using the JRXG8 to do the flight test, the second part of the test on this radio. Uh, I was going to use the Turnergy, of course, but uh, um, this radio, uh, the part two of the test has been waiting for a long, long time. So I'm going to first of all, I'm going to test it in this model. And because it's very fast and it should be quite touchy, um, it'll be a good test of the latency and the precision of this radio. Then I'm going to put this into the Penguin and we'll see how far we can go, see what the range is like, because we'll have the ArcBird OSD return to launch system. So it will turn around when it runs out of range, hopefully so. So that's where we're up to, just keeping you informed. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up and I'll be bringing you part two very soon, weather's fine. Any comments, put them on the bottom of this video as you usually do and uh, stay tuned if you're not a subscriber, do that, all the usual stuff. And I'll see you very soon in the next video from RC Model Reviews.